Welcome back to News Talk. The Kansas City Royals woke up World Series champions this morning. The one two again. Inside corner. The Royals, 2015 World Champions. And the crowd roared, and the Royals rallied late to beat the Mets in New York 7 to 2 in the 12th inning. This is the Royals' first World Series crown in 30 years. And here now to talk about the big win, we have sports writer Elliot Smith back with us. Hi, Elliot. Good to see you. So the Royals, yeah, they gave their fans some heart attacks, didn't they? With a couple of come from behind victories uh, in the last couple of games. Yeah, the Royals are really good at never giving up. They were able to fight late. They were able mm -hmm. to kind of get the Mets right where they wanted them, into their bullpen. And they were able to take advantage with some timely hitting and speed on the base paths. Take us through the game last night, and what, what was the turning point? Well, I mean, basically, they wanted to get into the Mets' bullpen. The Mets had their starter, Matt Harvey. He went eight strong innings. They brought him out for the ninth. It was a questionable decision, kind of one of those rock and a hard place moves. Uh, they got to him. They got to the Mets' closer. And from then on, it was just kind of a matter of time before they were able to break the tie and, and come out as champions. Yeah. So it went to 12 innings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I and mean, boy, that 12th inning was huge. It was a big inning. That's what they the Royals do. Five runs in that inning. That's and what that the was Royals historic, do. right? Yes. And what they do is basically just kind of patient, patient hitting, and they kind of get in those right situations where they can take advantage of their speed. And you saw that last night. They got some key steals. They got a, a great move in the bottom of the ninth. The runner advanced home on a throw to first. And those are kind of little things that you have to do to win a World Series. And when you're down like they were, and then you turn things around, it makes for a very exciting game for the fans. But talk a little bit about the grittiness of this team. Yeah, I mean, they've shown it all year. And I think last year, losing in Game 7, it really set the stage for what they wanted to do this year. They were able to add some pieces that really helped them in the second half. And they were the kind of team that a deficit didn't bother them at all. They were able to always kind of get the hits they needed, get the people up at bat that they wanted. It, it really worked out well for them throughout these playoffs. Now they can say they're World Series champions and the 30-year drought is over. <laughs> so very happy this morning. Now, you know, the Nationals, of course, would love to see themselves in that place, right? Yes, uh, yes. They just like to get into the, to the game, uh, to the World Series game. So they had, um, they started out on an up note. Everybody was very excited about the season ahead, and then they sort of a disappointing end to it anyway. Um, what do the Nationals need to do? Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is they're about to hire a manager, Bud Black, that I think will help change the culture of, of the team. And, you know, he's a, a former major league player. He managed for eight plus seasons in San Diego where he was regarded as, you know, one of the, the better managers in baseball, doing more with less. And he's going to have a lot more to play with here in Washington. And what I think the big difference with him as opposed to Matt Williams, as a former pitcher, Bud Black knows how to manage a bullpen, knows how to manage a pitching staff. And I think those were things that were big problems last year for the Nationals. You know, but then when he was with the Padres, I mean, they didn't make the playoffs in eight seasons. So the question is, why do the Nationals want him? Well, I, you know, again, I think the Padres had a, an average payroll of about $60 million, which is definitely at the bottom of baseball. And you look at the Nationals, their payroll's over $130 million. So he's going to have more to, to work with. And then I think the thing about Bud Black is uh, he was well-respected by his peers. He, he often drew votes in the manager of the year. He actually won manager of the year one year, even though his team did not make the playoffs. So it's a testament to his skill that he's well regarded around the league. All his players love playing for him. And I think he will bring a breath of fresh air to a clubhouse that had gotten a little stale. Mm. Do you think it's also an experience thing? Uh, do you think he's perceived as having more experience than Matt Williams did? Maybe not so much. He never managed a team before this. Right. I think that's huge. I mean, I think that not all the candidates that the Nationals looked at did have major league experience, whether as a manager or as a bench coach. Uh, Matt Williams' experience turned out to hurt him. Uh, you know, it's tough being a manager, and it's tough with all the decisions that you have to make. And he made some wrong ones, and, and it's not necessarily his fault. 
But with a team that has so much expectations, I think you need a manager who has been there before and who is comfortable making tough decisions. Yeah, uh, and you know, I think a lot of people um, still thinking about that uh, Papelbon uh, Harper choking incident. Uh, was that maybe something that paved the way for him to be out the door? Well, I think that was probably the last straw. Mm. I mean, I think just all along that September when the Nats kind of faded out of contention, there were so many decisions and, and things that swung against what Williams was trying to do. And, and that was the last straw with how he handled it, how he handled it with the media. And I think that was just just some of the yeah. mistakes just all compounded. And now that the World Series are over, um, can we expect an announcement soon about Bud Black? I would. I would expect the Nationals to, to make an announcement uh, maybe as early as today and maybe have a press conference later in the week. Uh, baseball always wants to kind of keep these things under wraps, even though that never works. But <laughs> so true, <laughs> isn't it? We're talking about it. Right. It happens, so. But I think the official announcement will come out soon. What do you think uh, Bud Black's going to do when he, when he steps in the door? What are the changes he'll make? Well, I think he's going to have a lot of changes to deal with a lot of which aren't of his own making I mean there are going to be a lot of players who are free agents who are headed out the door I think Drew Storm will probably be gone they'll have to figure out what to do with Jonathan Papelbond whether they uh, eat his contract and move on from him and Ian Desmond will be gone Denard Spann will likely be gone so he'll have a lot of changes that he'll have to work with but I think one of his strengths is going to be obviously dealing with the starting pitching and working with the bullpen to ensure that everybody kind of has a role and those are the things that were missing last year and I think that's where you'll see his strengths really come in. And he's going to have some great arms to work with on this team, right? Max Scherzer and uh, Steven Strasburg and, and even a rookie, uh, Joe Ross. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah, the Nationals will come back with a solid pitching staff. They had a solid one last year and it just didn't work out. I think you'll see them take another step next year. Now, uh, we should mention Bryce Harper taking home a nice award over the weekend, named winner of the 2015 Hank Aaron Award. Yes, and uh, I think it might be the first of uh, many for him. I think the NL MVP voting is coming up, and he's definitely one of the favorites. I'd be surprised if he didn't win. Obviously, with the Nationals not making the playoffs, that may take away some of his votes, but I think it's hard to ignore what he brought to the table for the Nationals this season. Definitely so. And we, uh, we have to mention the Skins, and they're coming off a bye week, so what's ahead for them? Well, they got the New England Patriots. They're traveling up to Boston for this game. Huge game. Uh, it's going to take a lot to stop that Patriots offense uh, and Tom Brady. Uh, hopefully they can get some help in the secondary uh, in order to try to slow their receivers. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, after the weekend and the bye weekend, they didn't really lose their place. They're still, what, second in, in their uh, division? Yeah, the NFC East mm -hmm. is really up for grabs, and uh, I think it's surprising that Washington is in this position at, at week eight, but uh, I think they'll take it. And uh, if they could somehow pull off this miracle and knock off the undefeated Patriots, they'd be right in the mix. What do you think they need to do? Uh, I don't know. I think <laughs> <laughs> the Patriots are pretty tough. I mean, they're going to have to find a way to hold Tom Brady under 300 yards passing. I don't know if that's possible. I wouldn't want to go up against him. No. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a fun week to watch, though. Yes, it will. Always love the, the competition ahead. Well, thanks for stopping by. Freelance sports writer Elliot Smith, good to talk with you. Yes, thank you for having me. And come back again. And we're back with a program note in just a minute right after this.